like to introduce Stephanie Prebish, who's going to introduce herself and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Prebish, and I uh, oversee the association services side of NACHA. Uh, and one of my very, very most favorite things I do all year is TPI. We're, of course, very sad that we can't be there in person. However, we've put together an amazing curriculum, an amazing faculty, and an amazing platform so that you guys can all enjoy TPI as you normally would. Michael? Oh, I'm sorry, I was going to turn it over to Jane Larimer. Hi there, I'm Jane Larimer. I'm president and CEO of NACHA. I've attended uh, TPI twice as a student, my first two years at NACHA, and then over the years, which have been uh, many, many more than two years, I've gone at every opportunity that I can have to teach, whether legal classes or strategy classes or to speak or just to enjoy uh, TPI. I think it's one of the highlights of, of my year every year when I can participate. Thanks, Jane. And Sean Carter, our Dean, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Sean Carter, President and CEO of Nietzsche, also Dean of, of the school this year. And I've attended TPI as a student about four times. I taught twice. Um, this is the second time on, on the board for me. Thanks, Sean. And Jen. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Wasman. I have been a TPI attendee for six years, five of which I've been thrilled to serve as a member of the Board of Regents. Um, when I'm not actively participating at TPI and championing the most amazing curriculum, uh, I am our senior manager at Capital One, leading our independent risk program for payments across the entirety of the company. All right, and Michael Kahn, our Master of Ceremonies, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, let me start. Uh, Jen, let me ask you first. Tell us about uh, the types of classes that are going to be available this year. Thanks, Michael. I, what I love about TPI, not just in the homeschool format, but even when we have the chance to gather in person, is both the breadth of classes and the array of the topic matter that we cover. It's amazing. We talk a lot about anything from disruptors and payment innovators, emerging payments, faster payments, to really covering a lot of what look like fundamental to topics, but are always good for a refresh, as far as wires and checks, and of course, the ACH and card networks as well. This is the type of curriculum where, regardless of if this is your first time coming into a payments training session, you're going to feel comfortable, or if you're a seasoned professional, you're absolutely going to learn and pick up new tips to take back to benefit your organization. I think what's also so distinctive about the curriculum at TPI is that it is designed specifically to support our candidates who are looking at two of NACHA's certification programs in their future, either this year or down the road in both the accredited ACH professional curriculum as well as the accredited payments risk professional curriculum. Both of those are designed to help you prepare for the test. So no matter what your expertise level is, no matter what organization you come from, there is something for everyone at TPI. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Stephanie, it can be uh, kind of daunting trying to figure out uh, what classes to take. Uh, I know that from experience. Uh, what kind of guidance would you offer? How would somebody know what's the right curriculum for the for the for that person? Well, you know, the beauty of homeschool that we have not done um, in the live event is that you can actually have access to every single class in the curriculum because you'll get a recording of the entire event post, uh, post TPI. Um, but as far as figuring out which classes to take, um, we're going to have a, 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 um, a feature on on our website called Ask Stephanie, in which you will be directed to me and you can ask me anything you want to about the curriculum and about choosing your courses. Also, the courses are listed by uh, schools of study. So if you're interested in just looking at payments, innovation and technology, you would go through the courses on that particular school of study. So we've got many, many tools to help you choose what classes are best for you. Great. And, and are these classes, are they interactive? Because not everybody's taking an online class. We have done everything we can to uh, infuse as much interactiveness into the courses as possible. Um, some of the classes are going to be a little bit larger uh, as far as attendance. 
um, but specifically with the pay with the master's course and the payments risk master's course, we've designed that those classes to allow for breakout sessions or for interactive Q and A throughout the class or polling. Um, there's plenty of ways that you are able to interact with both your faculty members and your fellow students. OK, but unlike uh, when, when you're there in person, if I have a question, I can't just uh, raise my hand or if I'm shy, I can't go up to the professor uh, afterwards. Uh, how do I go about uh, talking to the faculty? Well, you can virtually raise your hand in TPI Homeschool. Um, there'll be a, a wait, a button on, on your screen that'll allow you to do that. And then the Q&A is going to be facilitated by a not just staff member who is in the room with you um, to help guide you through Q&A. Um, it's true, it will not be the same thing. You won't be able to um, approach the faculty member right after the course is over, but you are able to message within the mobile app that goes along with the platform, um, or you are able to follow up with faculty after TPI Homeschool is over, and I'm able to help you facilitate that outreach. Excellent. Uh, Dean Carter, question for you. Uh, does a student need to register for individual classes? How's that going to work? No, students will not have to register for the individual classes. Just as in person, Notch is going to make this process really easy. Uh, and as you heard from Stephanie, you'll actually get the recordings to all classes at the conclusion of TPI. Michael, could I Wait, add something to that? So um, I wanted to just say that if you are interested in the master's program or the payments risk master's program, we do ask you to uh, to register for those in advance just so we can keep a class uh, account on those classes. Um, but if you enter a classroom and you just don't see it's for you, you are able to absolutely drop out and drop back into another class. It'll all be so easy on that platform. And nobody will be offended because they won't see you leaving the room. I, I was just going to say no embarrassment about uh, being noticed. Exactly. Uh, Sean, what about continuing education credits? Can folks get yes. them by attending homeschool? Yes, TPI will uh, will allow students to be eligible for 16 AAP credits, 16 AARP credits, and 16 CTP CCM credits. So just. Uh, across the board, uh, whatever you're trying to get your accreditation points in, TPI is the place to do that. And even if you're not 50 yet, you, you can still get APRP credits, but those AARP credits are super important. Uh, Stephanie, you know, inevitably there's always uh, two classes at the same time that you want to go to. This always happens. Uh, what if that happens uh, at homeschool? Well, like we said, you're going to have access to the recordings for every course after it's over. So if you missed one, then you can always go back and watch it later for your viewing pleasure. And, and if you and if you watch it instead of uh, on tape, whatever, you know, on tape. <laughs> <laughs> if you if if you watch the replay rather than watch it live. Uh, are you still eligible for uh, the continuing education credits? So that's a really good question, but sadly the answer is no. It's 16 is the cap. You can't go back and watch other classes just to get more credits. So it's 16 for everyone um, it, during homeschool. OK, uh, Sean and, and Stephanie, uh, Talk to us about how the platform will, will work. Because uh, like I said, not everybody is tech savvy. Not everybody has done something like this before. So tell us a little bit about how it's going to work and will there be a tutorial ahead of time to figure it out? So the platform that we are using is called Whova. And it will be very, very um, customer friendly. The user interface is amazing. Um, but prior to TPI, I will be sending out an email with a link to a video orientation to walk you through the platform so that you're able to use it uh, 
like a pro. And then, as I said, there is a, a mobile app that comes along with it that's web accessible or um, on your iPhone or Android phone that I've been playing with a little bit, and it's very, very in in it's what's the word? Uh, instinctive. You'll be able to use it very instinctively. John, got anything uh, you want to add? Yes, as with all the, the platforms that people have been using, the, the companies have made them really user-friendly during this period. Uh, so as Stephanie mentioned, there'll be plenty of opportunity to folks to get a chance to play around uh, with the platform. Uh, and by the time the school rolls around, I'm sure all the students will be uh, really comfortable using it. And not your staff is always great if anybody has any challenges. So that shouldn't be an issue for students. Okay. Jane Larimer, um, TPI is always a great networking event. And uh, that, that's one of the things that attracts people to it. But uh, this being homeschool, it's a little different. Uh, how are we going to network uh, with anybody other than our spouse or our cat? <laughs> well, to the best of our abilities. So because the networking and the interaction is so important to TPI, um, the physical event, and because everybody, that's part of what they love. We have, from the very inception of homeschool, baked in um, sessions for, for folks to be both interactive and just to be able to talk to each other and meet each other. So for instance, there are breakfast club meetings in the morning, you know, get your cup of coffee or your tea, and you'll be able to meet and talk to folks you know, virtually, and then also our noontime knowledge lunches where it'll be kicked off by a speaker and then there'll be round table discussions. So we're really trying to the best of our ability to make sure that, that that ease of interaction and of dialogue and of getting to know people that we brought that into the virtual space uh, the best we can. Okay, and Jen, anything to add? No, I think that the Jane is explaining it so well. I think what's great is that you can expect to still see a high quality level of networking just because of the passion of both the students and the instructors. Um, I think a lot of the, the topics we've already talked about of being being nervous about raising a hand, you can rest assured that TPI, you're, you're getting an all-star class of instructors who are so committed to bettering themselves and to really driving that conversation outside of the four walls of an individual session. So I think that with the structure that's been developed along with the, the cast of characters that we've assembled in our faculty, we're in good hands as far as covering off on networking too. Okay, cast of characters, I like that. Uh, I like that description. Uh, Dean, Sean, uh, how far in advance will students have access to the materials? So Nacho will work with the uh, faculty to ensure hopefully that the materials are at least a week before the school starts. Uh, so students will start to be able to go out and pick through the materials as they're trying to decide what, which courses they want to attend. Okay, and Stephanie, uh, will there be, uh, there'll be access to the materials after the event, of course. Uh, how long will uh, materials be available? Um, so students will have access to the materials and to the recordings through December 31st of this year. So, you know, if you're not doing anything over Thanksgiving and you want to catch up on your learning, that's the way to do it. <laughs> so even on Christmas Eve, one could uh, enjoy knowledge. And share cookies and knowledge with Santa. Very good. Uh, Steph, uh, can, here, here's the Netflix question. Can more than one person attend using the same registration? So that's a really good question, Michael, and sadly the answer is no. Um, each registration link is, um, is generated individually uh, and you will not be able to share access. Okay, and uh, I, I know we touched on this briefly, but Stephanie, tell us a little bit more about the Ask Stephanie feature for anybody with, with more questions. 
So um, Ask Stephanie is a button on the TPI homepage um, off of the NACHO website and you'll be able to click it and, and there's a form that you can either um, enter what your question is or it'll have my access information and you can call me or 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 email me or text me however you'd like to get in touch with me there's also a great feature in the mobile app that allows you to chat and message with individuals and i will be checking my chats all the time the tpi the three days that will be there are like my most popular days ever so after that people go back to not talking to me but those three days i'm really really involved and invested on behalf of the whole payments community, can I ask for a permanent continuance of the Ask Stephanie feature on the Nacho website? Because this sounds amazing. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, I, I actually kind of do it already. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's so it's so smart. I, I ask Stephanie usually anyway, but now I can formalize it and do it through a button on a website. That's incredible. I love this. It's like an easy <laughs> button for payments. I'm, I'm bummed about is that it's not alliterative and I'm not like Ask Amy, which I think would be much cooler. Yeah, too shy. I do like alliteration, but this is this is genius. <laughs> All right, let me uh, before I let everybody go, uh, let me go around the room or the virtual room and and ask everybody uh, to share your most memorable or if you have more than one uh, experience at uh, the Payments Institute and how this might fit into a virtual environment this year. So uh, let me start with uh, Dean Sean Carter. Thank you, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, many memories and Jane's a lawyer, so we can answer whatever we want to this uh, question right now. Uh, no, I think the most for me has always been the interaction actually with the faculty, which as Stephanie mentioned before, the fac faculty will be reachable for all students. Uh, I can remember specifically in Atlanta, we had a program where it was a team uh, competition on a risk uh, scenario, um, and I was able to work with those students as they were building their presentation for the last day. So that that interaction between the students and the faculty is still going to exist, and that, that's always been my most memorable experiences at TPI. All right, Jane Larimer. So I, I have two because it's a juxtaposition. So the first one is that my, when I was a student and, and uh, TPI at the time was at the University of Washington uh, mm -hmm. in Seattle. And just, uh, I was a payments lawyer. So I knew kind of payments overall, but I did not know ACH in depth. And it was the first time I was getting kind of the, the full soup to nuts ACH. And it was just amazing. I got to meet everybody. I got to, learn so much in so many different classes and just like a, a waterfall. And then probably 10 years after that was the first time I, I got to speak on the main stage when I was able to kind of take some of you know the strategic and the legal and different pieces and actually talk to you, um, talk to all the students as uh, an expert in my field then. And having both of those memories and that juxtaposition of those two times are, is something that's really special to me. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Jen? For me, I think my favorite memories of the Payments Institute have to do with the, the lunch and learn or this year the lunch bunch sessions. I, I just love having the opportunity to bring together everyone in a really human setting and talk about what we're seeing as payments professionals. So I'm so thrilled that we're able to continue that this year with some targeted topics to really propel that conversation forward. And the second topic that I'm so enthusiastic about was helping be part of the team to stand up the Payments Risk Management Master's Program and having continuity of that even in the homeschool setting. Uh, risk management has always been a passion of mine, so I'm, I'm so thrilled because those are some of the most challenging and complex topics. I walk away learning just as much from attendees as part of that interaction and conversation. And each year after I walk away from TPI, I know I've become the best version of the payments professional I can be due to that quality interaction that we get specifically in the risk management master's program. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see it this year. Great, great. And uh, Stephanie. Well, I also have uh, two viewpoints. I went to um, TPI as a student in 2004, shortly after joining 
Nacha, and I remember leaving, um, it was in Atlanta. I remember leaving Atlanta and thinking I had never been to a program like that before and I would never be in a program like that again. And when I moved over to the conference team in 2007, I went into my boss's uh, office at the point and said, hey, by the way, TPI is now mine and took it out of his not cold, not dead hands. Um, so I've been running it for 14 years now, and it is, as I said, it's my favorite three days of the year. I love getting uh, to meet all of the students. I love seeing them um, go through the AAP or APRP prep classes and then calling me after they've passed their exam. I love the friendships that develop at TPI, and I love the commencement at TPI. I cry every year when it's over because I'm so sad that I have to wait another year to go back to TPI. The other thing I'm going to miss, and anybody who'd been to Atlanta over the last few years will know that I'm about to say what I'm going to miss the most about being in person is the fried chicken tacos. I love those and I'm very sad that we won't be having them, but I might be making some for the lunch, for the, noon, the noontime knowledge lunches. Stephanie, is there a chance we could get a TPI homeschool cookbook with recipes so that we can recreate the magic as best as possible? Because I'm totally with you that getting getting the opportunity or to go and have fried chicken tacos every year is like definitely a hallmark of a successful TPI. And I know it was going to be in Boston this year, so we would have had all sorts of new delightful food that Lobster. we could discover. But I, I'm with you. Exactly. So maybe a TPI cookbook in the future. Hopefully this is the only year we do it. But I, I see a branding opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see what we can do, but that's definitely entertainment for the breakfast club meetings, I think, is to talk about what you had for dinner and, uh, you know, make sure that somebody has tacos at least one night. All right, and uh, can I wear my college t-shirt? Oh my gosh, you have to wear your college t-shirt. This is so casual. Um, it's even more casual than it is as usually. Um, we're also going to have happy hours that we want to make sure everybody comes to. We're going to have some contests about your favorite Zoom background or the cutest companion you have, whether it's a baby or a kid or a husband or a cat or a dog, whatever. Um, and we'll probably have a, you know, a mask contest to see who has the cutest mask. So we're going to have tons of different ways to um, bring out everybody's personality and to share it with everyone else. Excellent. So uh, we'll see everybody online in July and uh, we'll see everybody in person in 2021. Thanks, everybody. See Thank you at TPI. You. Thank you. Thank you. See you at TPI. See you at TPI.